Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about why gaining muscle is essentially the fountain of youth. And when I talk about gaining muscle, I really do mean gaining muscle and, and gaining strength. Uh, because, you know, when I bring those things up, some people go, so you're telling people to bulk and get really fat just so they can get bigger and stronger. Well, that's not healthy. Well, no, that's not what I'm telling anyone to do. I'm talking about gaining muscle. You can make slow bulking to do that, then you can cut down. You don't, you don't have to gain much body fat. And for a lot of people, you know, people we would be talking to in this case would be novice lifters, many of whom already have excess body fat. They'll probably be able to lose weight and gain muscle. So again, it's always a, a strange response I get to this. But when we start looking at most of the concerns that we have for aging, uh, the things that people really worry about and we see, what you find is that uh, a lot of it can be reversed purely by gaining muscle mass. And we know, of course, we gain muscle mass by strength training, right? By weight training. This is pretty straightforward. Uh, we also know that a lot of the problems we have related to aging are through sarcopenia. It's loss of muscle mass. And let's talk about a few of those things. So simply put, gaining muscle helps keep you younger in a lot of ways, or at least the biggest concerns of aging. All right, right up front, uh, stuff like metabolism. You know, everyone says, oh, well, you know, your metabolism goes down as you age. Yes, because you lose muscle. And this has been studied in the lab. And what we find that a 20 or 25 year old compared to say a 55 or a 60 year old, they have the same metabolic rate when we normalize for muscle mass and body weight. In other words, the reason you have a slower metabolism is because you lose muscle. That is the number one cause unless you have a medical issue which can probably be treated with medication. Okay, there are medications to fix any other problems that would slow your metabolism beyond the loss of muscle mass. So it's because you guys are losing muscle. That's why you're like, well, I can't eat as much as I used to and I gain weight. Well, yeah, you've lost muscle tissue. This is completely fixable. And this definitely counts for a lot of you who are in your 30s and you're like, well, I can't eat as much. My metabolism is lower. No, it isn't. If you lost muscle, it is. Get under a barbell. Problem solved. All right, what else are we concerned with? Diabetes, cancer, heart disease. If, if everyone always says, oh, these are old people diseases, right? Except that we know that strength training and resistance training reduces diabetes rates by 80%. 80%. You want to know what raises diabetes the most? Carrying extra body fat. That's your highest risk. Carrying more muscle mass dramatically reduces it. Again, due to better insulin sensitivity, better nutrient partitioning, better insulin response. People who train and have fair amounts of muscle produce less insulin in response to their foods. They need less. Their body utilizes it more efficiently. Okay? So diabetes goes way down. What happens when you start combining that with good diet? My God. That's 80% just from the strength training. That's before you fix your diet. Cancer. We know strength training reduces cancer rates 50%. Not my opinion. This is what studies have been showing for over a decade now. 50%. And that's if you just train twice a week. You lift weights twice a week. And when I say lift weights, we're not talking again. Guys are coming in and just doing some curls. No, I mean training, getting, working your whole body, doing some big movements. 50%. If you happen to get cancer, people who continue to lift weights through their cancer treatments have double the survival rate. They have double the chance of coming through. That's what the statistics show. Cardiovascular disease. And all of this comes down to having more muscle. The strength training builds muscle. That's why it does this. Cardiovascular disease. We know based upon the literature now that resistance training actually improves heart health more than cardio does through separate pathways. When you combine them together, it's even better. But when compared by themselves, just in a side-by-side -side comparison, people who strength train have better heart health than people who only do cardio when all other factors are normalized. Now, people who do both and eat a good diet have the best outcomes, obviously. But again, it dramatically reduces cardiovascular disease risk. 
All right. How about hip fractures, bone fractures? Weightlifting improves bone density more than anything else you can do, particularly heavy weight, heavy being relative to your current strength. So when I say heavy, I'm not telling people to strain and flop around with bad form. You know, if, if your max bench is 315 for, for a smooth single, I don't mean go over 315. If it's only 100 pounds, then obviously you're not going to go over 100 pounds, you know. Strength being relative, but heavy lifting causes the greatest improvements in bone density. All right, well, that reduces hip fractures, reduces bone breaks, all right? The stuff that really starts adding up, because usually once you, you fracture a hip, 90% of people die within three years of, the, of a hip fracture. It's a 90% death sentence in the next three years, okay? How do we stave this off? I don't know, some heavy squats, some leg presses, hip hinges, right? These big structural exercises, the ones that load all those bones up in that area, right? We start reducing fractures. When you start adding all this stuff up, it becomes very, very apparent. This is your fountain of youth. You know, how many people do you know who are like, oh, I'm 40 and I wake up hurting in the morning? Well, at the time of making this video, I'm 45 years old. I may be 46 by the time it comes out because I'm not far out now. You just saw me deadlift over 600 pounds a couple different times. As you're seeing me do floor presses and bench presses in the mid 300s, I don't hurt. I'll let that one sink in for a moment. I'm 45 years old. I don't hurt when I get out of bed in the morning. You don't think the strength training is a factor? You don't think my diet's a factor? You don't think the muscle mass is a factor? All the bone density? and tendon thickness and everything that I've built from doing this. I don't necessarily always feel as good as I did at 20, but I sure don't feel like everyone else I know does at 40 plus. I'm not falling apart. It matters. It matters a lot. And it really makes a difference when you, when you get to a serious level like I'm at in terms of strength, okay? Because your bone density, your tendons, your joints, if you do it correctly, they're stronger. They're more robust. They're more resilient. You don't hurt. Unless you've accumulated a bunch of injuries. But we program to prevent that happening, don't we? It's what we do on Team Blaha. All right, so when you look at all these things, all this stuff that people are worried about with aging, most of it's related to a lack of muscle tissue. Not all of it, but most of it. Get under a barbell, guys. And gals. Alright guys, well that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative. And I'll talk to you guys next time.